Today I'm going to share with you seven of my favorite autumn DIYs. Keep watching. I'm Brandy, and this is Making It My Own DIYs. Be sure that you recognize this as a compilation video in which you have probably seen some of these projects before. Thanks for watching. Another bottle accent. Y'all, I'm loving it with this leather this year. So this was just a salt jar. It had salt in it and uh, I saved it because I really like it or the bottle. I'm going to use some of these beautiful leaf rub-ons. Yes, rub-ons actually work on, on this. I'm going to use those from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to take some more of that leather and some of these furniture nails or brads or tacks, whatever you have. You can spray paint tacks if you want to. And then you're going to have some tools here. I'm going to use my white chalk pen here that came from Dollar Tree and use it on the back side of this fabric and just draw out a circle that I know is going to fit on the front of my bottle. Now I am going to draw a narrow band, almost like a belt, to connect to it, whatever size or width you want. And then I'm gonna cut that out with my rotary cutter on my mat. Easy. Now you can use the leather from the Dollar Tree to do this project because it's smaller and you won't need as large of a piece. So you could definitely use it on this. Okay, so I know I want it to go around the center of the bottle like this. And this leather piece is definitely big enough to go around. I'm gonna cut out the circle. I'm just gonna cut it off the big piece and then I'm gonna trim it down right along that white line so that I have a circle like this. And you see how it fits perfectly on the bottle? That's why you need to measure it first. Then I'm gonna choose a leaf. I was so excited when I did a little sample with this to see that it actually works on this fabric. Now I don't know if it's gonna work on all fabric, but it worked on this one. I'm gonna cut it down to a manageable size. Then I'm gonna apply the leaf that I like on top of it. If you press it down just a little, it, kinda, it will kinda stick just a tad for you kind of hold itself in place just a little bit before you start really pressing it down. So I've kind of centered it here and then I'm going to take my plastic um, squeegee or whatever kind of tool you want to call this. It's actually to be used on vinyl and I'm just going to start pressing down and um, from the center outward and I'm going to hold it in place because I don't want it to skip up on me. So just take your time here, hold it in place and then I want you to see how good this turns out. Oh my goodness. Peel it off slowly in case you need to rub it down a little bit more. Y'all, would you look at this leaf? It's gorgeous. Look at that. Oh, I'm so excited about this. This has really opened a door for opportunities in other projects, knowing that those will stick to this type of fabric. So exciting. Okay, so I'm just going to take my little um, pliers here. These are bull nose pliers. A lot of people ask me about these. They are wonderful and I use them all the time in crafting. I'm going to cut those down so that the heads are flush. Now I need to find a positioning for this round disc. You can always use, uh, leave this long and wrap it around the bottle, but I wanted to make it a little bit shorter. So I'll show you what I did. I'm going to use the center almost like a belt buckle and I'm using some E6000 here. This is just the one that's branded for the uh, jewelry because it has a smaller tip, but I took the tip off of it. If you use hot glue on some fabrics, it will pucker and I don't like that look. So that's why I'm using the E6000 rather than hot glue here. And I'm going to use my little clamps to hold it in place for just a little while so it has time to kind of adhere. Now I'm going to wrap this around and this is when I decide I don't want to overlap it completely. I just want to overlap it just a little bit. So I'm going to trim it off here, leaving just enough so that I can tuck it and glue it underneath the round part. And I think that's perfect. Once my glue is dried, which doesn't take very long if you're careful with it, I'm going to take the clamps off and then wrap it around the bottle kind of getting that centered so that it's the circles in place. I don't want it to stick up above the bottle um, curve there. I'm going to wrap it around, hold it in place with my fingers. Same process as before. Add my glue down here and then just press that down into place. I've already kind of eyeballed it and made sure that it's in the right spot. 
So then I decided to do a band around the top. So I'm just gonna cut a narrower piece and I'm gonna fit it around the top. Once I know how much I'm gonna need of that, I'm gonna go ahead and cut that off and then I am going to cut a little triangle in the end of it, just like that. And I like the way that looks. I'm gonna put the little joint in the back. Now, this will slide on and off the bottle, which is fine if you want to be like me and use your projects over and over again. So I don't wanna glue it down to the bottle itself. I'm gonna use a little bit of double stick tape. Um, and I'm just going to use that to help hold this in place. And it would be perfect. It'll last all fall season like this. And if I wanna change it out, I can change it. Now I'm gonna move on to those little um, furniture nails there. I'm gonna add some hot glue. I got it on the cool temperature here so that I don't burn my fingers. And then I'm just gonna position it where it looks like this was tooled together rather than glued together. What a pretty look. And I love that they're a bronzy or brown like color because they really blend in nicely with the leaf and the leather. This is, oh my gosh, this does not look handmade to me. This looks like something you would buy at a store. Look at this. Isn't this gorgeous? Oh, if y'all like it, please give me a thumbs up. Yes, I work hard. Yes, just like y'all do. Okay, so now we're going to use this as a vase. And I'm just going to cut down some uh, extra pieces that I've saved from other projects. And the hydrangea, I had an extra one of those, so they match perfectly. And you can just make them into a little bundle here and use them like this if you would like. And it's really pretty. It'll fit right in the top. And this is how it will look. I've got this beautiful fabric. It does not have magnolias on it, but the flowers are similar enough, I think. And this grateful, thankful, blessed sign, those came from the thrift store. I have some paint, this is spray paint, and then my antiquing wax. I'm gonna use a couple of different brushes. I just recently picked this up at the thrift store. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? It's like a little magnolia swag. And then I have this picture that used to be in my daughter's room and she has outgrown it. So I'm gonna use my heat gun here, heat up those seams because they're glued and nailed down. Then I'm gonna use my knife to cut the seam. Then I'm going to just take this tool here and this is like a, I don't know, a spatula of some sort. And then I'm going to pull the back off carefully and then remove the little nails that are down in here clean up my edges, remove all that paper and bulky glue. I'm going to put my fabric down, the pretty side down on the mat. I'm going to lay the backing down and use it as a guide so that I can cut the fabric off. And this is my rotary knife, or my rotary blade, excuse me. And then I'm going to use my Mod Podge to put it down. I'm going to add quite a bit here because I want that fabric to stay in place. And then using my brush, I'm going to be sure to go around all the edges, all of the corners. All across the middle in a nice, even coat. So I want to take the opportunity to say welcome to any of you who are not familiar with my channel and have not been here before. If you've come over from, from Brenda's channel or from anybody in the playlist, you are very welcome here. I'm glad that you stopped by. I am always striving to bring you unique, budget-friendly DIYs. I use thrift and Dollar Tree supplies to make it economical for all of us. All right, so if we press it in place, I'm now gonna use my little Mod Podge roller and I'm gonna go all over it. Now this is gonna make that glue stick to the fabric and it's almost gonna appear as though it is painted down or if it was made as one piece. You can see how nice and smooth that is. Next, we're going to take this and spray paint it. 
I'm gonna use one coat outside. And then while that's drying, I'm gonna take this antiquing wax. I'm going to add a little water. This is my little water spray bottle here. I'm gonna mix it up and we're gonna make essentially a stain that will match the sign. Because it's kind of a gray wood now, I want to bring it to a richer color. So I'm just gonna take a nice soft paintbrush here and start adding this down. It's nice and watery and it moves really nicely across this wood. It, this was not a sealed wood, so this is gonna go nicely in here. We're gonna go around the outside, the inside, and all of the edges, except where we're going to be gluing the backing back down. You don't wanna put any antiquing wax there because it could interfere with the um, ability of your glue to stick. And we don't want the back popping off, right? So since this is a standing picture, we don't want this in the way. I'm just gonna glue it down just to keep that little stand from moving around. Perfect. Now I'm gonna take that same antiquing wax mixture here that we made, the stain, with a very soft round brush, and I am just gonna go all over this piece. My idea for this was to take it from that brass, gold, whatever color that was that was on there, which actually was really pretty in itself. But I want this to look more like a wood piece. And uh, you'll, you'll see why in a moment. You'll, you'll understand in a moment. So keep going along here. You're gonna go in all the cracks. You're gonna go in every little detailed piece of those leaves. There are some seed pods there. There are some, um, all the petals of the magnolia, the center of the magnolia. Be sure that you thoroughly cover this in the wax. Y'all, we have reached 16,000 subscribers. Y'all are amazing. For y'all who have been here and who have been following, thank you so much. You do amazing things with this channel. You really do. Being here and watching and following means so much to me. All right, now we're gonna take the backing. Once this is dry, we're gonna lay it down and it is just going to pop back into place. So just press it down and it will lock into place. But we're gonna be doing some things to the inside of this box so we need to be sure that it doesn't move around and that nothing pops out. So we're gonna go ahead and add some glue just to the corners because at some point in the future, I'm all, I may want to use this again. And I can recover this with something else, just pop the back out and just do something else to it. So this will ensure that that happens. I'm going to center my little sign right in the middle. Isn't that gorgeous, y'all? I think that's so pretty. And although those flowers are not magnolias, I think they're gonna work great in this project. So I'm just trying to get an idea of where my center would be. Then I'm gonna add my hot glue. And this is Gorilla Glue because this is gonna be, you know, it's kind of bulky, so it's gonna be kind of heavy. I don't want it to fall. And then I'm gonna add it where it looks like it's centered, press it down nicely. And then look, this is gonna be like an embellishment on the top so that it looks like it's made onto the box. I love this. I love this so much. Once I get it in the center, you can check with your roller just to make sure. I'm gonna press it down in place and hold it there to give that chance, that a chance for the um, Gorilla Glue to grip. Now you're gonna use something like E6000 if you don't use Gorilla Glue. Look how gorgeous. So there are a couple of spots I missed. I'm just gonna go back in with a fine brush and get in the little cracks. And you can see here the details. You can see what I was talking about here. I wanna get in there. Now, if you do a little too much, like I got a little too much there on that leaf, just grab a terry cloth of whatever type, old wash rag, old sock or something that you have, and just pat it and it will just go, it'll stay down in the cracks and the top will come off. So it makes it perfect. I'm just reinforcing my shadows and stuff in there. And y'all, doesn't this look gorgeous? I love this. So what do you think about magnolias in the fall? I think this looked really nice. I mean, we use other flowers and when they're not in season, right? So why not magnolias too? Beautiful.
The next project is a sweater pumpkin floral. I love, love, love this one. So I got this at the thrift store about a year ago and I've held on to it. I love that it's old and kind of stained looking. It's very rustic to me, very rustic cottage. So this is my 18 inch ruler and you can see that this is about 17 inches long and about seven inches across, just for reference. Look at these beautiful Dollar Tree sweater pumpkins. Oh my goodness. The orange and cream are the most beautiful thing I have ever seen. Really, from Dollar Tree, $1.25, I don't even know how they made it that cheap. I'm gonna take some thrifted picks, but you can get any picks that you like. And these are also thrifted. Got some varying heights and textures, and I like that in my projects and my florals. If you have a regular box or planter, just use the same technique. So I'm gonna put two tall ones in the back and sort of spilling over the side. I'm gonna take two and put them kind of more at an angle, but in the corners in the front so that they kind of spill forward a little bit. Just my preference, but you can do what you like. This gives me an idea of how tall and wide I want it to be. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my next greenery picks and put these in here. What are those little, what is that called? Those little poofy looking, it's like a Chinese lantern? Is that what they're called? I can't remember what they're called, but I love the texture of them in this project. Really nice, I thrifted them, but they had Target tags on them. So maybe they came from Target last year or the year before, I don't know. Okay, so I'm gonna start adding these in. Now they're on wooden picks. You can cut these wooden picks down with whatever type of tool you have if you would like. And I'm gonna add these in at varying heights. I'm gonna start kind of in the front and then I believe I'm gonna go to the back next. I'm gonna leave these a bit taller. I want the taller to be taller. I want the taller to be taller, uh-huh, than the back. You know what I mean. And then you can trim down the next ones you put in to give it sort of a step down look and these kind of do allow you to bend them forward or to the side on those wooden picks just kind of lift them a little bit and twist them carefully and um, that way they're not sticking straight up you know you can kind of do them to an angle which again gives a little more interest when you look at it from all the sides look how gorgeous these are look at the colors together y'all that's really I love this. I mean, I don't know if that's everybody's thing, those colors, but to me, that's just, that screams cottage to me. Beautiful, I love it. Okay, so then I decided I wanted to make it a little bit fuller. I'm gonna take a pick of foliage. Again, whatever you have, whatever you wanna use. I'm kind of going for the colors I already have. And I want to add just a little bit of that yellowy color in there too. So I've just cut these off again at varying heights. Some on uh, short stems and some on the longer stems because the ones that are longer will go in the back where the taller pumpkins are and the ones that are shorter will go in the front. And I'm going to add those in wherever I feel like I need a little more fullness. And I like the way these florals look together. Really pretty. I couldn't find any blue pumpkin. The first is going to be a wood tag duo from Dollar Tree. So you're going to start off with some of these. You can use a round bead or something round with a hole in it. And I'm going to use some window clings, a little piece of this paper, and then two of these Crafter Square signs from Dollar Tree. And these came out this summer. So I'm going to be using the back. I love the wood grain on both of these. I chose these two signs because of the grain. And I'm going to start off by taking some of my antiquing wax. I'm going to water it down. Just put it in a little cup. I'm going to add some water. You just see me squirting the little, I have a little spray bottle here. And I'm going to use a chippy brush and just go back and forth all over 
this sign. Now, if you like a complete full coverage, you can do that. If you like it more streaky, you can do that. If you don't have any antiquing wax, you can use a brown paint that you water down to make your own stain, whichever way that you choose to do this. And if you just have stain that you want to use, you could certainly just use a can of stain, but be sure that it is in a well-ventilated area when you put it down. So now I'm just going to make sure that this is completely dry. I'm just using my Arteza dryer here, my little heat gun, just to make sure everything's dry. I'm going to set it aside and we're going to work on the next tag. So this is just some, um, this came out of one of those crafting paper tablets and I just flipped through and I found this beautiful cream and orange. I thought this would be really pretty for fall. I've just traced it and cut it out to fit on the tag and because it's going to be a little bit short, I've taken a scrap of here and I'm going to try to match the patterns up like that. And it looks pretty good. There's a little space, but you won't be able to see when the project is finished. So keeping it lined up, I'm going to flip it over, trace out the little hole where the tag um, hanger is going to be. And then I can move the, the um, wood tag off and just cut out around the little spot that I traced. If you don't want to do this part, you could skip it and you just punch a hole in it later um, with a stick or something if you wanted to. And I'm going to do the same thing with the top, just kind of holding it in place flip it over and then I'm going to trim that little piece out as well. So I'm choosing to use a matte Mod Podge here but you can use school glue, you can use uh, double stick paper, you can use a glue stick if you wanted to. Now would be the time to get those glue sticks at Dollar Tree because Jot usually has um, extras in their school supply section so just be sure instead of looking in the crafter section you look over there in the specials for the school supplies and you can get a bigger pack and save a little money okay so once i've got full coverage on here i'm not going too crazy with the amount of mod podge that i put on it i'm going to just press it down with my hands first kind of centering it where it belongs press it down with my hands and then i'm going to take my roller and this is a Mod Podge roller and just roll it out to make sure everything is nice and flat and that every piece of that paper sticks to the backing. Next I'm going to cover these. Now these are actually little cedar dials that you put on the top of your hangers in your closet to keep the bugs out of your closet, right? Keep moths out. I found these at the thrift store and I thought you know these would be perfect size for the top of these tags. So that's what I'm going to do here. I, I picked out two of them, but I'm only going to need one. All right, while that's drying, I'm going to take my sanding block, or you can use an emery board, fingernail file, a regular piece of sandpaper, whatever you choose, and I'm just going to shear off the edges by going down and away, down and away, and it will slowly start to peel off, and then you can just remove it just like that. You get a nice, clean finish, and it looks store-bought. You don't have any raggedy edges on there. Plus, this is going to look really nice when we do the next step. So you're going to go all the way around your board, around the corners, around the edges, just like this. Looks good. If you like that finish, you can leave it that way. If you want to make it a little more rustic, go ahead and grab that mix that you already had made there with another baby wipe and just hit those edges. Just go right over those white edges of the paper and this is going to give it kind of an aged look. Let it overlap a little bit onto your paper and it just will kind of blend in with the edges and give it a nice, beautiful, rustic look. You can feather it out a little bit. You can drag your finger across the, you know, any areas you want on that tag to add a little more richness. Whichever way you want to do it is going to be great here. I love to give y'all little tips just to bring your projects up from Dollar Tree to, oh my goodness, no way you got that from Dollar Tree. All right, now we're going to go over to the window clings here. I think these came from Dollar Tree, but if they didn't, they came from Dollar General. That may be a Dollar General tag you see there. So these were from last year. Um, they were donated to me. By the way, I have a P.O. box, so if you ever want to send me anything, you can do that through that P.O. box. We're going to leave the backing on the paper here and cut it out so that you can't see through it. It's going to be more like a sticker or an applique now. Go ahead and grab up any type of little applique or wording that you like. 
to add to your second sign. I'm going to use this one. I decided to go ahead and put some Mod Podge on this and use a little bit more of the checked paper that I used on the big sign. So that's just going to kind of carry it over to the other sign and make it look a little more cohesive, I think. Fits perfectly on my scrap. I'm going to press it down and I'm going to just iron it out. I'm going to roll it right on out. Cut as close as you can with your scissors. And then you can go back over this with a fingernail file or with a, you know, your sand and sponge here, whatever you want to use. And you can use the same technique here that we used on the big tag sign to go around the edges, take that white down, and just make this look a little more rustic. Now, I thought I was going to leave it this way, so I went ahead and added a little dimension with this, and I'll show you how to do that. You're just going to take your um, finger and you're just going to push down and drag little lines, little curved lines, just like a pumpkin has curved lines. You can leave it like that if you want, but I thought, you know what? There's This came off of that same um, cling backing that this big pumpkin, the stack pumpkin, came from, and it fits perfectly on those little appliques. So if you find this one, you can definitely do it just like this. If not, just leave it plaid. That's pretty too. I'm going to use some hot glue and fix this down and the only section I have um, I will address in a minute I'll show you how to get the little stem down because it's too thin to use the hot glue. I'm going to go ahead once this is thoroughly dry glue it down. I'm going to position it where I think I want to have it and then I'm going to just go ahead and make this look a little more old and rustic too just so that everything blends in nicely together. I'm going to add some hot glue on it and then center it over the top of those holes. And look at that. Doesn't that look perfect? I love it. I love the colors and everything in this project. It's so pretty with that pop of blue in there. I'm usually so traditional, but I really love that navy blue in there. You might be seeing more projects with this for me. So I'm just going to use a little bit of glue here. This is just regular glue. And I'm going to stick my stem down. I'm gonna hold it for just a minute to let it catch. And then once it's dry, I'm going to loop these, the little tag hanger, right back through. We still have an extra one that we didn't have to use. And this is how this project is going to look. Such a simple tag project. Such a uh, really pretty, I think, door hanger. Or you could put it on your wall or wherever you wanted to put it. Just a really nice rustic piece. The next project is going to be an embellished wood bird house. We're going to use a little wood house and a card. So just grab any card you see over in Dollar Tree in their card aisle. And then these furniture markers also came from Dollar Tree in a three pack. So I saw this card at Goodwill and I loved the color and the print. It's so cute with all the little birds and the fall leaves. And it fits perfectly onto this card. There'll be a little excess that's going to be removed, but that's okay. I'm just going to sit it on top kind of get my edges where they need to be and then I'm going to center it where I like it and off to the side is perfect so that made it really easy for me then you can just use your fingers to press down a bit on the angles or and then cut it out with scissors or you can flip it over on your cutting mat I'm just going to give you some options and trim it out with your blade and your cutting mat be super careful when you use a blade that you are not cutting towards your fingers because these things are sharp I did get this from Dollar Tree. I think it was in a three pack, y'all, over in the automotive or tool section. But they see how the blade fits right under the little chimney there? All I had was one little piece that was still stuck and it just folded and popped straight off. All right, now see how nice that is? It's almost centered right in the middle of that house. I love it. So here are the three markers and I'm going to show you what each color looks like because they're all brown obviously but they all have a little bit different of an undertone so I'll just show you here you can freeze it and zoom in decide which color you like best I've chosen cherry and then I'm just gonna start coloring it in you can use your antiquing wax here if you want to but for those of you who don't have the antiquing wax or a Walmart nearby but you do have a Dollar Tree you can stain things with these um, 
Dollar Tree furniture repair markers. That's what they're actually labeled as, I do believe. And I've used these on lots of projects. I even have fall projects that I use these markers on from last year and probably the year before. So, yes, you can use these markers to do your staining. So there's the roof, the sides, and the back. The front is clean because we don't need to waste our furniture marker on this, do we? We're not going to be looking at this part. We're just going to add some Mod Podge or school glue or whatever type of glue you want to use. I will say that once you put it down though, you need to let it dry before you start sanding off your edges or you will have your project shifting around. So be sure that it is dry. Just walk away, work on another project until it is set in place. I'm just putting a thin layer here of the Mod Podge all over the front and I'm going to place the card down right on top. Then you can press it down with your hands, roll it out if you would like, but you see how it shifts around? You gotta be super careful. Once it's dry, go ahead and get whatever you wanna sand with. I love my sanding block. And start shearing off the edges. Y'all, I am almost at 15,000 subscribers. I got up this morning, I checked it. I have 13 more to go before August 1st to get to my goal of 15,000 subscribers. I'm so excited. Thank you for all of you who have subscribed. There is going to be a giveaway, so be sure that you have your notification bell clicked when you are subscribed so that you do not miss out anything. Be sure that you check in the community tab um, as often as possible because sometimes I do my giveaways through there. And you don't wanna miss out. Okay, so I went back over my lighter edges with the marker. And then I'm gonna use the same technique we used on the tags to go over the house to give it a more of a rustic look. More aged, more homey, whatever you wanna call it. Distressed can be called many different things. I'm just gonna go over all of the little white edges. I'm gonna pull it a little more toward the front. You can see here how it kind of fades inward. I love that look, love it. And then you can also just take your finger and if your background is like a stark white and you don't care for that, just go ahead and take your finger and drag it all the way across lightly like this and it'll take that brightness out of the doesn't need a stand or anything. The next one is a scrap lumber makeover. This piece of wood was destined for the garbage pile. It was actually next to the burn pile and I pulled it away from the tree so I could bring it in and use it and apparently knock my table over in the process. So this is what it looks like. It's kind of dirty, scuffed up. I went ahead and wrote down 57 inches so you'll know how long this is. I didn't trim it down. It's exactly as it is when I pulled it. I'm gonna use some walnut wood tint. This does not have any smell at all. It doesn't stink, it doesn't stain, it's great. Well, it stains your wood projects, but you know. So I took it outside and used my sander on it, my electric sander, and then brought it back in, wiped it off, get all the little dust off, and then now I'm just taking an old terry cloth rag here. You know, you can keep your old towels and just tear them into shreds, and they're really good for staining and cleaning your craft projects. You save a little money that way. So you could just go ahead and put as much as you need, as much as you like for whatever coverage that you desire. You might could use antiquing wax, but I'm not entirely sure because things don't like to stick to it very well. So I've gone over to my Cricut and I'm cutting out the letters for the word harvest. I've already measured everything. This is not like a Cricut tutorial video, just letting you know. I'm not a pro, so I'm not gonna give you a step-by-step -step on a Cricut, but there are plenty of crafters who know exactly what they're doing. You probably wanna go to them for those tutorials. Moving along, I am going to remove or weed all of the extras off. And you see the little pick in my hand that actually comes from Dollar Tree, and I really like it. So, I am going to 
Now that it's all weeded, I'm going to take a piece of contact paper that I got from Dollar Tree. I'm just gonna lay this on top and I am gonna use this to lift my letter off without tearing my letters. So I am transferring it. This is like a transfer tape, if you will. I'm gonna place it down here on the wood and I'm not gonna press it all the way down yet. I'm gonna measure and see how far down it is, if it's where I like it. And that's what you see me doing here. And then I'm gonna move it down just a little because I need a little space on the top for extra embellishing. And I'm just measuring here on the sides as well so that it is centered. And then once it is, I can press it down with my hands and then get some type of a tool and or squeegee and then go ahead and press this down into place. This vinyl that I'm using, I thrifted it. It is awful. It is awful for vinyl projects, but it is great for stenciling because it peels up very easily. Ta-da! My first one. Okay, so now here it is. With all of the letters in place, I've used about, there's like an inch of space in between each letter there. So I have a nice gap. Then I'm gonna take some of my plaster chalk paint and go over the top. I'm lightly going over the letters so that I don't go under because I didn't seal. And then I'm gonna go heavier over after that. Then you can just peel off. You can see how that was tearing. And then this is what it looks like and I love it. Love it, love that dark wood showing underneath. Okay, so you can get these packs of little wooden cutouts from Dollar Tree, um, Harvest DIY Words. Very good value because there's six in there. And you can use these to embellish your projects. I'm gonna use this on the top of my sign. And I'm just going to stain it with the same stain. Like the, oh, look what I did. Oh, it's so frustrating. They are so fragile, y'all. But look, I'm just gonna keep going. I'm rolling with it. Just keep on going, cause we can fix it. We can fix it. Oh. Okay, so I'm gonna use a little bit of my wood glue here. And I'm going to be gluing this down. I've already glued down the two Fs and I'm going to glue down the rest of the word right next to it so that it is exactly where I want it to be. Wiping off my extra wood glue. I'm just gonna stick it back together. See, no need to throw it away. We can still fix it. The next project is a sauce jar makeover. So simple. A lot of steps, but easy. So this is a spaghetti sauce jar. It has been put through the dishwasher and all the sticky has come off. And I have some candle tops. I have some berry garland. I also have some moss, some foam, etc., etc. I'm gonna start by trimming off a little bit of foam to fit in the lid. Be sure that you put it right in the center so that you do not, it doesn't get in the way when you put the jar back down because we will be putting the jar back down. You're gonna glue some moss on here. You can use reindeer moss if that's something that you prefer. And we're gonna take that berry garland and turn it into a little tree. Yeah, a little fall tree. So to, to make that stem a little bit sturdier we're going to fold it up on itself twist it and then just kind of pinch it together so it's skinny then you're going to cut off different lengths of that same berry vine and then start twisting them together at different heights on that what we're going to call our trunk the longest branch we're going to call that our trunk you're going to start adding on in the shape of a tree this is going to kind of symbolize a fall tree so if you didn't look at those as berries you could imagine that those might be fall leaves right because they're a dark red and an orange so you can cut them at different places i like to cut right above where the little berries come out because then you don't have a stick poking out on the top what is actually the tip of it will be where the leaves would be if those berries were leaves so i'm going to wrap around here and just pinch it together with the little pliers whenever I need to, to keep it in place. Our tree will not be flat. It's gonna kinda look that way for a minute, but then once we get it all um, as thick as we want it, as many branches as we want it, we will pull it out a little bit and twist the little branches in the ways that we like them, and then it will be ready to go into our jar. So now I can take that sturdy branch that we made and press it down into that 
foam underneath. And this is our little tree. It is not too wide and it will easily fit up into our jar because we checked it, we know it's the right height. So I'm gonna press down, tighten it up, and just trim off the little pieces that are on the outside. This is the easiest way I've found to do it. And now we're going to embellish the bottom so that it doesn't look like a jar sitting on a piece of wood. So we're gonna take some jute, we're gonna tie it, or you can start it off by just gluing it down, but I just tied it this time for whatever reason. And then you can just start twisting and gluing because there is a Prego label, Prego, Prego, whatever you wanna call it, spaghetti sauce label, cut into the glass or raised up off the glass, and we wanna cover that up. So you can twist going upward and just add dots of glue where you need it. And this is going to cover up that piece. I would love it if you would subscribe and become part of the family here. We have a good time. We're very social in the comments and very supportive. All right, so you see how it looks. I've shown you here how it looks when you go all the way down to the jar. Now to put the top and bottom on the jar, we're gonna use some whatever type of glue you like. I've got some um, super glue gel stuff that comes from Dollar Tree. Fix All, I think is what it's called and then some hot glue, and we're gonna center it over that lid on the bottom, so that's gonna be our base, and then the smaller lid, we're gonna use the same glue process as before, and we're gonna put it on the raised areas now because the bottom, some of them have like a, a little indention. You're gonna put the top on, and then you can use like a bead or a knob or a little pine cone or some type of embellishment on the top. I just have a piece of a chess set that I got from the thrift store. Just use some hot glue and put that one down. We're not gonna be lifting it by that little piece, so no worries about that. I'm gonna wrap a little bit around this lip just because I think it looks better. Uh, you know, with the bottom, it looks more finished, I think. I'm gonna trim that off. And then I've got some bows that were destined for the garbage can that came off of other projects. Saved them and I'm gonna recycle them and reuse them on the base of this cute little piece. Isn't that sweet? That's cute, y'all. And now you can just dovetail your ends or cut them at a slant or whatever you wanna do there. You could also just make a jute bow or you can make a bigger bow to go on there or you could put your bow on the top. But here's our little tree in a jar. Isn't it cute? Almost like a little fall terrarium. Click the subscribe button for more budget-friendly inspiration. I'd appreciate it if you did enjoy the video to like it and share it. Here's another video if you like this one. I think you'll love the next. Bye.